Hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. Berg. I'm coming to you actually from my kitchen uh, with the first of a series of a uh, flip classroom lesson. And uh, a flip classroom lesson, boys and girls, means that I'm going to teach you the lesson at, and you're in your home and you're watching it right now. You can stop it. You could rewind it. If I'm going too fast, I'm going too quickly, you can go back and view it. You can view it twice, three times. And then you can, uh, the beautiful thing about it is you can stop. And then you can actually get paper out and do the activity that I'm going to show you. And then the next morning, instead of doing a lesson in the class and the homework at home, you're actually going to do the lesson, listen to the lesson now. And then you're going to do your homework at school interesting concept and so this is the first lesson about that we're going to talk about equivalent fractions today can you say that with me equivalent fractions what word do you see kind of in there an equivalent what does that sound like to you that's right equal we're going to find equal value fractions and of course fractions are everywhere i have this banana here this is a whole but a fraction would be a part of a whole. So if I cut the banana in half, this is a half of a whole, a half of a banana, and I've got two pieces. You put it back together, and that would be the whole banana. Okay. So let's start this activity now. I want you all to get out a just a sheet of paper, and I want you to fold it into thirds like this. So now when you open it up, you should have three equal parts. Then what you're going to do, any, any color, it doesn't matter, boys and girls, I want you to take one of the sides and color it in. And I'm going to do that right now. Oh, and I'm done. So here we go. Right here. What fraction of this sheet of paper is red? That's right, one-third, boys and girls, one-third. One out of the three parts are colored in, and we just happen to color it in red. Now, we're going to find an equivalent fraction for one-third. To do this, I want you to fold your paper back up the way it was in thirds, and then I want you to fold it one more time. Now I want you to tell me what you think when we open it up, what will our equivalent fraction be here? Let's see if you're right with your prediction. What fraction of the sheet of paper is colored in now? That's right. Two six are colored in, two out of the six. Notice that one third equals two six because even though we have more pieces here, we have two parts now red out of six, we didn't color any more in or take any out. It's still the same amount. So one third now equals, we found our first equivalent fraction for one third, and that's two six. So now let's find another equivalent fraction. Let's take the paper. We fold it back to where it was. And now what we're going to do, boys and girls, is we're going to fold it one more time. Now, when I open it up, boys and girls, and when you open yours up, what do you think the next equivalent fraction is going to be? Now, if you notice the pattern there, boys and girls, how did we get from 1 to 2 and 3 to 6? We just multiply both sides by 2. So if we follow the pattern, what do you think our new equivalent fraction is going to be? You might want to stop it now and do this and um, predict. Well, as we do it, what we have now, that's right. If you said 4 twelfths, you're correct. Our new equivalent fraction is 4 twelfths. So now we found 
two equivalent fractions to one third, and that's two six and four twelfths. And if you followed the pattern of multiplying the numerator and the denominator by two, you would have figured that out, that we'd end up with four twelfths. So our paper looks like this now. We have four out of 12 colored in. So boys and girls, I know we had started with something like this in the classroom, a whole, and then finding equivalent fractions and just matching them up. But I thought it would be really cool if we just did this activity and I showed you. And what I want you to do, if you get a chance at home, try another one. Try folding your paper in half. After you fold your paper in half, color one side in. Then each time you fold it, again, predict what your new equivalent fraction is going to be. Now, boys and girls, fractions are all over the place. I'm in the kitchen now. Something you need to know. You need to apply what you learn with fractions. Whether you're measuring, you're in the kitchen, helping your parents, whether you're cutting things into thirds or you're cutting things into the fourths, it's all extremely important. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I can't wait to see what you've learned. And uh, tomorrow morning, we'll be working on it in the classroom. Thank you.